Hello, I am Pastor Ernest L. Deese with Agape Holistic Life Changing Ministries. As always, I am honored and I'm humbled to share with you what thus says the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, oh gracious Father, Lord God, I thank you for being the great I am, the awesome one, the unmoved mover. Hallelujah. Lord God, I thank you and I give you praise right now. Father, I thank you for looking over all of us, not just America, but the entire world. And Father God, I thank you especially for the household of faith. Now, Father God, we are praying you bless, oh God, this word as it goes forth. Let it touch someone's heart. Let it encourage someone. Just we pray and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. We praise God for you being with us at this hour. As always, I thank God for the members who support this ministry vigorously. And all of our partners throughout the entire world. Not just here in the United States, but throughout the world. I thank God for you, your prayers, your financial support, amen, and your attendance. And I thank God for that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. On today, I really just want to encourage your heart. I hope I say some things that will bless you. Uh, maybe I will say something that will give you pause and cause you to think about a few things. Um, but I want you to leave uh, this presentation uh, in hopes. I want you to leave it encouraged, knowing that God, amen, indeed has something good in store for you. I want to talk today from the thought, whatsoever God has for me, I want it. Amen. Whatsoever God has for me, I want it. You may say that whatsoever the Lord has for me, it is for me. Now, I want to talk from a few scriptures here. I want to read them in your hearing. And I want to sort of take my time and uh, just read them sort of slowly so that you can indeed uh, think about what the word of God is saying. Listen carefully. Uh, first, we're reading from Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 through 24. Amen. Then we'll read Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. And then Numbers chapter 23, verse 8, and Numbers 23, 19 through 20. Now, all of those who are already in Christ Jesus, those of you who have already accepted the Lord as your Lord and Savior, I want you to listen carefully. Those that are already in Christ Jesus, those that are called according to his purpose. Listen carefully what the Lord says to you. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. You can take that to the bank. Because of God's great love, we are not consumed. And right now, I can say, thank you, Jesus. I was sharing with one of my brothers recently what could have been some very, very close encounters in my life down through the years. And because the Holy Spirit was so pronounced in my life and because I listened to the Holy Spirit, I believe right now, that's why I'm able to stand before you this day. Because danger was lurking and God spared my life 
on numerous occasions. So I said that God's word is true. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. And I'm a living witness, amen, that God must love me because of all the things that he had brought me through. Amen. That's why it's so easy for me to magnify the Lord. It is so easy for me to praise God. It is so easy for me to lean on him in the good times and in the bad times. So I'm saying to you, amen, I hope some things that we say during this time will encourage your heart because if God did it for me, he sure enough can do it for you. It goes on to say they are new every morning. Thank you, Jesus. Let me go back a little bit so you can make sure you connect that. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Watch this. For his compassion never fail. They are new every morning. Thank you, Jesus. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait on the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As we look at Jeremiah 29 and 11, and while we are going through these scriptures, if you will, ask the Lord to open your heart. Ask the Lord to open your ears that you may hear and receive and leave this session, this class, amen, encouraged and determined to move forward with your faith unwavering in the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, for I know the plans I have for you. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to that God talking. And I want you to just zero in on this and, and accept this as God talking to you. I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to give you hope. That's what I want for you today. Plans to, to give you a future. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Regardless to what your past looked like, God is offering you a better future. I oftentimes tell people, if Satan ever try to mess with you and try to condemn you, trying to remind you of your past, you just remind him of his future. Remind him of what is awaiting him, hell and damnation. Eternal fire, separated from God. Just remind him of what is waiting for him. And I got a feeling he might leave, he might not leave you alone altogether, but I got a feeling he'll leave you alone for a while and have to regroup like he did Jesus. He'll leave for a while, but he'll come back. But when, if he does come back, Make sure you have the same word for him that you gave him the last time. The best thing to fight Satan with is the word of God. That's what Jesus used. We see in Numbers chapter 23, verse 8, how shall I curse whom God has not cursed? Remember, Whatever God has for me, I want it. And whatever God has for me, it is for me. Thank you, Jesus. Sign, seal, and deliver. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead on and claim it right now. Accept that it's being done. Position yourself to receive whatever God has for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What I find too often times, People are waiting and waiting. And as soon as God begins to fix about to bless, they get tired of waiting and, and they leave their position. And God will bring the blessing where they were, where they were positioned to receive it. And when the blessing get there, they've gone somewhere else. 
But I'm saying to you, amen, position yourself to receive what God has for you. Thank you, Jesus. Listen at this. How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? And how shall I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? God is not man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Let me tell you something. The God I serve is a promise keeper. If he promised you something, it's a done deal. He keeps his promises. Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Lord, I thank you. Yes, he will. I am a living witness. God has been so good to me down through the years. I praise him. I worship him. I adore him. I magnify him. I give him the glory right now. Hallelujah. I feel the joy in my soul right now just thinking about the goodness of God. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed. Now watch this. He has blessed. And I cannot reverse it. Whatever God has for you, amen, it is for you. Whatever God has for me, I want it. And I stand ready to receive it. Now listen, to those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the sovereign Lord God says to you in John 3.16, for God so loved the world, that that's includes you. You may say, well, I don't deserve God's forgiveness. You may say, I've done some bad things. You may say, I feel dirty. But I don't know any sin that a blood of Jesus can't cleanse. So I'm saying to you today, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Lord, I thank you. But have everlasting life. Look what's awaiting you. Look what's awaiting you. So I'm saying today, if you are out of the ark of safety, listen to the word today. Receive what God has for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Also, he says in John 3, 3 and 3, 5, Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. And I say, we must be born again because we were born in sin. We were shaped in iniquity and lawlessness. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus went on to say that, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I remember one of the members was talking to me, and they kind of hit me by surprise because I wasn't so aware that my office was considered the blue room. And so someone came to me and said, they said, uh, I, I, I don't know what goes on in that blue room. But whatever it is, I want it. Now, so I began to ask around because I wasn't aware. And I asked around, I said, now, what is it with this blue room? What, what, what? And he said, well, Every time people come out of the blue room, they are crying. They are crying. But yet, this person came to me and said, I don't know what goes on in that blue room, but I want it. So I began to inquire, and I asked. I said, I said why do you think people come out of here crying? And to make a long story short, they told me, they said, Pastor, when 
people go in your office. They got a lot of things on them, and they, 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 they're thinking it's so horrible and terrible. And when they get into the office, I talk to them about the love of God. I talk to them about the God's forgiveness. I talk to them about God's grace. And then they say, once I talk to them about the love of God, once I talk to them about the grace of God, they realize that the thing that they wanted to talk to me about wasn't so bad after all. They feel so relieved. They feel the joy and relief until they break out in tears. And I was relieved by hearing that. So I'm saying to you today, regardless of how bad things seem to you, God got something better for you. Bring it on to Jesus. God has love for you. God has forgiveness for you. God has a little more grace for you. Trust God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And I say, whatever God has for me, I want it. I want God's love. I want God's grace. I want God's forgiveness. Listen, no one can deny you having it. And no one can take it from you once God has given it to you without your cooperation or your permission. Now, this reminds me of the Moabites and their leader, Balak. Balak, Balak. In the 22nd and 23rd chapters of Numbers. Now, the Moabites were descendants of Lot. Moab being the son of Lot and his older daughter. Now, Ammon was a son of Lot with his younger daughter. Thus, we have the Ammonites. The Edomites were descendants from Esau, the son of Isaac. The Amalekites were descendants from Eliphaz, a son of Esau. And I'm saying all that to make a point here. They were all kin folk. Lot was the nephew of Abraham. All right? Now listen. The children of Israel were descendants of Abraham by way of Abraham's grandson, uh, Jacob. Now, these family folk had become rather territorial. They were willing to fight each other rather than share and be hospitable. When Israel escaped out of Egypt, which was a bad place for them to be, Upon asking the Moabites, their kinfolk, their relatives, to let them pass through their land to get to the promised land. The Moabites, who knew their situation, refused them passage. Therefore, they had to take the long way around. Let me pause there. You may feel right now that there are some family members standing between you and a blessing. You may want to take a lesson from the Israelites. They didn't go in and start fighting their kinfolk. But what God has for you, it is for you. Turn it over to God. Trust the Lord to direct your path. This may be a lesson for you to learn as well. Now listen at this. Now in the scripture today, despite how they were treated, the Israelites, they still prospered. God will see to it that you still prosper as well. Listen, and the Moabites felt that the Israelites posed a threat to them. Therefore, they sent for a prophet to curse them. How many times have people put stumbling blocks in your way when God said that you are blessed? Watch this. 
But watch how God turns what would be a curse into a blessing. Maybe it's time that you step aside and let God fight your battles. But maybe you are fighting with the wrong weapons. We, God has weapons that are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. Because what God has for you, it is for you. And I pray to God that you want it. Even the Holy Spirit. God has the Holy Spirit for you. Hallelujah. How bad do you want it? God can do it for you. Whatever God has for me, no one can deny it. No one can take it away. Thank you, Jesus. Can you say right now where you are, amen, that whatever God has for you, nobody can take it away. God, if God promised it, thank you, Jesus. Count it as a done deal. On three occasions, they tried to get the man of God to curse or speak bad things against the people of God. They promised him a promotion and to give him whatever he wanted, a blank check, if you will. They sent high-ranking officials to persuade him to come so that he could speak against God's people. How many people right now Satan has lined up against you? But don't fret. You hold your peace. As the song say, let God fight your battle. One of the best weapons to fight with is the sword, the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. The man of God's response was, if by lack, the one who wanted him to speak against God's people would give him his house full of silver and gold. Listen. He said, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen, at first, God told Balaam not to go with the Moabite people at all. For the people of God were not to be cursed, for they were blessed. Lord, I thank you. But Balaam acted just like a lot of us do. He kept going back to God about the same thing that God had already given him instructions on. Now, you know how we do sometimes. Sometimes if God doesn't really give us the kind of answer we want, we keep nudging. Because we think we get the, right, the answer that we want. God doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't make mistakes. He, he had declared the end from the beginning. But listen, so here's what God did. God told him to go ahead, but only say what I tell you to say. How many of us today can declare that we only say what God tells us to say? Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the final analysis, we find a man in number 23, 8, and 19 through 20, it sums it up pretty well. Balaam said, how shall I curse or speak against God's people? Or how can I oppose or go against whom the Lord had not opposed? You better be careful how you try to fight against God. Your arms are too short to box with God. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever God has for you, it's for you. Whatever God has for me, I want it all. Oh, yes, I do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen at this. Balaam, the man of God, said in verse 18 and 19, God is not man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and, hath, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken? Or look, I have received. Has he spoken? And has he not performed it? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God can make it happen. Can he do it? Behold, or look, I have received commandment to bless. 
That's what Balaam said. And he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Did you hear that? Give me, a, give me a house full of silver, house full of gold. If God said these people are blessed, they are blessed, regardless of what you give me. So I'm saying to you, don't sell out. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Keep your faith in God. Because what God has for you, it's for you. Don't you sell out. Don't you leave your position to receive what God has for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We find in Deuteronomy chapter 28, around verse 2, and I just love this verse. And I want you, on your own time, if you will, read, read the entire chapter. It says now, and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. These blessings are going to accompany you. I'm going to send blessings on you. They're going to surprise you. And I got a feeling some of you have already been surprised by some blessings that God sent your way. I've heard testimonies about how you went to the mailbox and, and you got an unexpected check in the mail. How you've gone to work and God had a promotion waiting for you. Oh, and, and it just goes on and on and, and no doubt you were sick. You needed a, a surgery. But God dispatched an angel and healed you. God will overtake you with blessings. He will surprise you with blessings. He will have blessings to come alongside you. So I'm saying you be encouraged. Hold your head up. Amen. Amen. What God has for you, amen, is for you. And rest in that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, I think about a story in the 16th chapter of Luke. And I want to just turn there a little bit. In the 16th chapter of Luke, beginning at verse 19. And some of you may see yourself. You may have delayed gratification. It may seem like your blessing is delayed. Everybody around you is being blessed. But you hold on to God's unchanging hand. In Luke chapter 16, verse 19, the Bible tells us there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. You know, what is 120 years? If you live on this earth 120 years, what is 120 years compared to eternity? At, at his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. But listen at this. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. <clears throat> Think about this. Think about what it just said. God dispatched an angelic chariot to carry him somewhere. A heavenly chariot. Something that the rich man, no doubt, would have loved to have had. But look what God gave to Lazarus. Thank you, Jesus. And he goes on to say, the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes in torment. Look at the big difference now. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. Now it was Lazarus who was living a life of enjoyment. 
So he called him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the finger of his, to, to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. Listen at this. But the beggar was living in joy, had an angelic escort carry him to glory. So I'm saying to you today, and the story goes on. And I want you to read that story. Because the rich man wanted, amen, someone from the dead to come back and talk to his family members so they wouldn't go where he went. But it was told, it was told, if they don't hear the preachers, the prophets, right now there are preachers preaching the unadulterated word of God. If they don't hear the preacher, they won't hear someone that came from the dead. I'm saying today, God has given you an opportunity to get it right. Don't blow it. I want to go back. I want to highlight something. The royalty of London had nothing on God's child. The Queen Majesty may have been born on royal characters with royal escorts, but the child of God was sent a heavenly escort and no doubt was born on angels' wings. Look at the difference. Look at what God is doing. I'm saying to you today, whatever God has for me, I want it all. I want the joy. I want the peace. Amen. I want the love, the forgiveness. I want the grace. And all the trimmings, I want it all. And I'm saying to you today, God said I can have it. Because he wants to give it to me. And then, hallelujah, he wants to give me a home with him throughout eternity. That's what I'm looking forward to. So I'm saying to you, is it worth it to try to hold on to this old world, seeing that we can't carry anything in this world with us anyway? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Today, I want you to know that all of us are going to eventually face the inevitable. Oh, yes, we are. You know what? It is given to man who wants to die. And after death, judgment day is coming. But for those that are in Christ Jesus, there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? No charge. No charge. No charge. It's all covered by the blood. It's all covered by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm looking forward to that grand day. Thank you, Jesus. Ready or not, Jesus is coming. Ready or not, your day of inevitability is coming. Get ready. Get ready for it. And the way to get ready is to give your life to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is asking all of us to put bygones behind us. We all have sinned. We all have come short of the glory of God. We all have made mistakes. Isn't that right? We all could have done things better. Yes, we could have. But look at the love and grace of God. Forgive each other and let Jesus cover all our sins and mistakes with his precious blood. He is asking now that we surrender ourselves to him and ask him to be our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. We must believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Do it now before you're forced to do it. Thank you, Jesus. He is God. He is the one that forgives sins. He is the one that came and died on Calvary's cross and rose the third day with all power in his hand. Jesus Christ Amen. Commanded a water baptism. Amen. Be done in his name. He said he will fill us with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. 
When I received the gift of the Holy Spirit, I spoke in other tongues. And the Spirit of God gave utterance. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm saying today, you can have the same experience. I got what I need to get into the kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I hope I say something today to whet your appetite. Amen. God got something for you. And nobody but nobody can take it away from you. Invest in eternal life by giving your life to Jesus Christ. We all were born in sin. But we need to be born again by water and of the spirit. And continue in the teaching of Jesus Christ. We thank you now and may God bless you. Is our prayer for our for your continued growth in God's word. I want you to know that we have am an in-person school of knowledge at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Also, we have uh, for uh, our for all of us, we have Sunday morning worship that starts at 11:30. Amen. On Sunday morning. And that is also in person. We have online word empowerment on Wednesdays at 730. Thank you, Jesus. And I said, all of you, please, please, please do not forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please share with your Facebook friends and others as well for more information on the plan of salvation. I want you to feel free to call 678-759-8989. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we love you dearly. We thank you so much. You are awesome in all of your ways. Now, Father, as our appetite has been whetted, and Lord, I, I, I just yearn. For everything you have for me. Hallelujah. And I thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord God, that nobody can rob me out of it. For you have determined for me to have it. May God bless you all. May God keep you. Is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. May God bless you.